learning how to use ChatGPT can be quite fun, especially if you have kids around, especially if you have a family. So I'm going to show you three ways in which I use ChatGPT with my kids, with my nephews, with my nieces, etc. And hopefully this will give you a couple of ideas. Example number one is drawing ChatGPT generated images of the kids in fun scenarios. So let me walk you through this. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the speech to text function here to give ChatGPT a prompt. So let me just give you the example here. Draw a photo of a Hispanic girl that's eight years old. Her name is Jenny. She has a polka dot shirt and she wears green shoes and draw her riding a unicorn in a candy land type of world. She's having a blast. She's having a really good time. And so what that's doing, it's transcribing that audio into a text. And then I'm just going to push that through it. In, in, in as a prompt so check let's check this out let's see what we get <laughs> that's pretty good okay and so you can you can add other kids to the scenario now because i gave this character a name jenny i can i should be able to use this again and put jenny in a different setting so it might be something like this okay now draw jenny in a land of friendly mushrooms jumping up and down um, making friends with polar bears and monkeys totally wild <laughs> okay so again same function of audio to text and then I'm just pushing it through as a prompt there you go <laughs> again so like you can have you can you can iterate through this and again you can add other kids that are in the at the party or or, or at home and a ton of fun I've spent a, a lot of time with the kids doing this and they love it okay example number two is around using ChatGPT to generate a custom story for the kids. So typically what I'll do is I'll ask the kids like, okay, who wants to be in the story? All right, what superpowers do you have? What are the characters we want to involve? Like usually they, they like characters from Paw Patrol, Sesame Street, etc. What's the setting? What's the challenge? What are they after, etc. So let me just give you an example. And again, I'm using the same... Actually, I'm using something... and. Here, I'm actually leveraging the voice mode in ChatGPT because I want ChatGPT to actually narrate the story for the kids. That's part of the appeal. So now I'm going to push the mic, the headphone icon here, and I'm going to have a conversation and give a prompt to ChatGPT. All right, here we go. Hey, can you come up with a story for an eight-year-old kid? Put Jenny in the story. She has a superpower of being super fast. Also add Billy. He has a superpower of being super strong. Include characters like Cookie Monster and Elmo. Have it be a medieval setting and have the problem be a grumpy dinosaur that ha that is hoarding a whole bunch of popsicles that the kids want. Make it fun. Make it lively. Once upon a time, in a magical medieval kingdom where dragons roamed and knights rode on sparkling unicorns, there were two brave kids. Jenny, the fastest runner in the land, and Billy, who could lift anything with his super strength. They lived in a small village with their friends Cookie Monster and Elmo, always up for an adventure. One hot summer day, the kingdom had run out of popsicles. Everyone was sweating under the bright sun, especially Cookie Monster, who loved his sweet treats. Me need popsicle now! Cookie Monster said, wiping his furry blue brow. Elmo tugged on Jenny's sleeve. Elmo heard a rumor. There's a giant, grumpy dinosaur named Rex who's hoarding all the popsicles in the ice cave. Okay, I'll stop it there. But as you can see, 
it's following the directions pretty good. And when you put this on the speaker, the kids are really into it because they're in it. Their favorite characters are in it. It's a compelling story. They came up with it. And you see a lot of eyes light up. So that's example number two is coming up with custom stories. All right, example number three is coming up with your own stories, both the illustration and the text and also the narration. So let me walk you through an example of a recent story that I've been working on with my boys. Okay, this is a story about Thanos and a mix of different superheroes. You've got some Marvel, you've got some DC mixed in, so it's just a whole bunch of things. And there's a, the image, and then there's some text, and there's also a narration. So if I in a peaceful this, city, the sky suddenly darkens as a portal opens. From the swirling vortex steps, Thanos, his eyes glowing with malice. He towers over the city, his gauntlet crackling with energy, ready to unleash destruction. Yikes. Okay. And so there is an image, and then there's also audio and text for each one of these. So this is something that I'll do with my boys. Okay, so how do I, I do this? We have to start off with first the different story beats, the overall story, and also the text. So you can go into ChatGPT and say, help me create a story about Thanos and Thanos and Batman. Break it up into scenes. Give me a text narration for each scene. Also, give me a prompt for the for the image of the scene for image generation. Cool, and we'll. Drop that in there, and we'll see what we get. Okay. All right, so now you see that ChatGPT is breaking this up scene by scene. And so this, and this would actually, this is the narration, the camera pans across. Okay, so not exactly what I want. I can change that, and you can tweak that a little bit. But this is the next piece that I need. This is the prompt for the image. So then what I can do is grab this and go to Grok. This is the X platform LLM, and it has image generation in it. What's different about Grok is that it's not as, let's say that it's a little bit more open than ChatGPT. If I were to go into ChatGPT and put this prompt in, it would tell me something to the effect that it's not able to because it's a copyrighted type of thing. But Grok typically lets you draw these sorts of things. So let's see what we get there, and then let's go back to the ChatGPT. And so then what I'll do is I'll grab each one of these image prompts, drop it into Grok, and look for the ones that my boys like. So they might, they're, they're really good critiques. <laughs> and so they'll sometimes spot something that's an issue or something that they don't like. And then they can just, we can just refresh that and get a new image and so on. And so that's the process. And then you just you know, go back here and you grab another prompt. And, and drop it in here and just continue that process until you get the image that you want. So here, let me just add draw. And so Grok knows to draw that image and let's see what we get here. Bam, wow, that looks, that looks really good. Again, if, if kids don't like that, you can regenerate that if you want as well. Wow. And see, there there are problems that, that we get, like, why does he have Batman on him? A pro tip is I'll sometimes grab these images and I'll put them in Canva, and Canva has some really good tools for cleaning up these imperfections. So that's another pro tip that I would recommend. Okay, cool. So now what I'd like to do is add some narration as well. So I, I played that for you. Okay, so you can grab this text here. And then you can go to 11 Labs. 11 Labs is a text to audio platform. So I can drop in text here. And then I can pick the uh, speaker that I want. And it should generate it for me. So here's like different voices. And then we can play it. In a peaceful city, the sky suddenly darkens as a portal opens. 
From the swirling vortex steps Thanos, his eyes glowing with malice. He towers over the city, his gauntlet crackling with energy, ready to unleash destruction. That's a good voice. I like that voice. And then you can download this, and then I drop it in a Notion page to bring it all together. My next step here will be to put this on a website so my boys can just v visit it whenever they want and play it as, as much as they want. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Three examples on how to use ChatGPT and other AI tools to have fun with the kids. The cool thing is this is a great way for you and the family to learn about these different tools and a lot of the techniques will work when you're trying to do something that's maybe more productive. So I'll oftentimes use the audio to text functionality. I'll oftentimes use voice mode. I'll oftentimes use the image generation for my work and other professional tasks. But it's always fun to be able to practice these tools uh, at home during the weekend at parties and also get some smiles from my boys and my nephews and my nieces. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. Cheers.